Our next speaker is uh, Rosario Cerbello, professor from the University of Palermo. Uh, Rosario, can you share with us your screen? Okay, please go ahead. It's okay? Yes. Do you see? Okay. Okay. Can I start? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Welcome to everybody. I'm going to present uh, this uh, this paper, named the Theoretical Experimental Case for the Computational Study of Mind, and I am a robotic platform for OMS signaling. This work uh, is made also in collaboration with uh, Professor Ishiguro, Professor Antonio Lieto, and Professor Kella, where we are still working. What is our idea? Our idea is uh, how it is possible uh, to uh, measure in some way how uh, it's possible to have an effective uh, human-humanoid interaction in order to, to have a sort of um, computational measure of uh, how the emotional state, the feeling of the person that is interacting with the robot uh, can move uh, and can change uh, the trust that uh, he feels uh, when interacting with a robot. Our idea starts from the point of view that uh, it is important to create uh, in the near future um, an interaction that is a long time interaction with the cooperation between human and humanoid. And in this sense, it is important that the humanoid is feeling as a teammate. We start uh, um, from uh, in our uh, point of view, we start from the idea that is a robot uh, need to be a teammate in order to have a real trust uh, between human and humanoid. We, we start uh, with the idea to measure the analysis of trust in a simple competitive game. Why this idea? Because our main research question is if it's possible to derive from uh, the measure of the signal coming from a brain computer interface, a real model of the human trust. And, uh, and also, we want to, to create a sort of cycle where the interaction between human and humanoid is a, in a double sense, in the way that the, the action of the humanoid can move, can change the, the trust and the action on the human. The biological brain computer interface parameter that we have taken into consideration for the first preliminary experiment that we have conducted, starting from the idea that it's important to, to measure the intention, the attention at the level of stress, because this three information can, can be useful in order uh, to um, think about our model of trust. We, we have used our uh, UNIPA BCI architecture, and uh, this is a, is a reference about uh, uh, the paper that we have developed with Professor Kella and Dr. Giardina. And um, what is our idea of a trust cognitive model? We started from the analysis that uh, was conducted from Hyder in the state of art, that um, you think about uh, the conditions that are necessary for a human user and robot that are operating in a shared environment and in order to have uh, what we have called the pro-social perceptual loop trust, the idea is uh, how it's possible to measure perceptual quietness attribution all the element taking from the trust that is a human user that is operating in collaboration with the robot in order to obtain some signal that give a, a sort of continuous uh, information about the level of trust that we are measuring. Our uh, first trust cognitive architecture that we have fought for the first preliminary experiment was based to the idea to use 
uh, the brain computer interface uh, and also a, a Kinect, because the Kinect uh, is also important to take into consideration uh, the movement uh, of the body, the honest signal movement of the body of the, the person, to take into consideration uh, two kinds of brain signal, P300 and N400, because from the state of art, P300 is uh, connected with the engagement, and N400 is connected to, uh, in the state of art, is grammar violation. From our point of view, is a measure about the expectation and in some way about the trust that the human think to receive from the robot. And if he, in some sense, the action of the robot are not uh, in the line with the, the action that are expected from the human, we have a sort of violation. And in this way, we can create an adaptation, a user trust that is, a, that is kind useful to this um, uh, level of trust can send to the robot in order to modulate his behavior and to adapt his behavior in order to eye, eye up to uh, give the trust up about the human. The trust cognitive architecture that we are uh, we are working with uh, Professor Antonio Lieto and Professor Kella starting to realize yeah, that if it's possible to create a formalization, a generalization about our trust cognitive model in order to have a, a rules that can uh, describe uh, the movement of our pro-loop uh, trust or uh, condition. And in, in this model, we have a social environment, trust or entrusty that are uh, robot and uh, people, uh, person in trust or trusty is the, the robot. And um, all the information that are necessary that uh, we, we, we need to take uh, from uh, trust or in order to, to modulate uh, the trust. And starting in particular, we think that the preference rule of perfection, the action and agent cantorization, and the trustworthiness are three uh, parts of our model that using all together, because the trustworthiness uh, is the capacities of uh, and the condition of the in, in, in the term of other disposition, the action the agent the cost section give us uh, a more abstraction about the goal and the effect, and also the preference rule of perception can um, better describe the surrounding environment, the social environment. We are thinking about also once we will complete uh, our model and we will are able to, to run the new the new experiment to think about also about a questionnaire that can correlate together all the elements that uh, we are developing inside our model in order to, to measure the effect of the, the experiment in the human user uh, that will be involved in the experiment and to have a, a better uh, feedback about what we are thinking to, to have with this trust cognitive architecture. In particular, uh, saliency from our point of view is uh, related to the idea of uh, perceptual acquaintance because uh, we want uh, to, to measure how the agent in in the interaction and the condition in which the robot is perceived as an agent. Because another point of view is that with silence, we want to measure if, uh, if an agent is perceived, uh, is a robot is perceived as an agent that uh, is able to interact with the human, it's more easy that uh, this robot could be in some way considered as a, a, a more uh, trust robot that can Another two element important that we have taken into consideration is engagement and attribution. Engagement is related and 
give a measure of the calibration of the engagement and with attribution is, a, a, is an important element that is necessary to measure the attribution of capacity and intentionality because it's important to distinguish between capacity and intentionality because are two important dimensions about our, our model. About the biological brain fascia, uh, I want to give a more detail that uh, I, have, I have gave it before, that PT and in the state of art uh, is uh, the most used uh, signal because it's related to the concept of update, but using both signal, there are not many uh, examples in the state of art because in this way is more, is more useful uh, to connect together the context updating of the PT and the signal and the duration and of the semantic spentaxis about N400 in order to have a more complete information about the brain signal. Why on a signal? Because uh, uh, in uh, some other experiment that uh, I have conducted uh, in collaboration with Professor Shiguro using both of his robot. In the first part, in upper part of the, the slide, you can see the interaction with the telenoid robot. In the, in the low part, we, we can see the interaction with the geminoid robot. The idea is, order, is also related to is possible to have a measure of the honest signal of the human that is interacting with the robot. And in this way, this honest signal could be useful to have a more complete description of the situation where we have a human and human herd interact together. About some preliminary experiment that we have conducted, our idea, our first idea, but we are uh, still in, in working is that if uh, uh, I create a simple uh, play scenario, when the robot uh, is able to, to have a different play modality, and this different play modality, cheat or to play fair or to play cheat, is not uh, uh, is unknown from the, the person. The idea is uh, that we have measured during a very simple game, rock, scissor, paper, we have chosen this, this two means orientation, focus, and tension, and use this information in order to uh, apply to, to our model. This is, is a, a very simple uh, uh, interface that, uh, that we have used. What is in the conclusion of my, of my presentation is, uh, is it possible uh, to, to use uh, this model uh, to have uh, a, a personal, uh, our point of view, access of the trust and the robot agency? Because uh, what we think about it, uh, if uh, it's possible to assess the trust of the robot agency is more, is more easy in the near future to have a robot that can leave his past role of a sort of a luxury toy in order to have a more effective partner in the routine of the people in the, in the future. Thanks a lot for uh, our attention. I, I want to thank also my colleague and friend, uh, Alexis Samsonovich, uh, who invited me. And uh, I am uh, free for uh, some questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Rosario, for your talk. Uh, now we have time for questions. Uh, maybe I should ask, C can you tell a few words more about this trust loop? How does it develop? So you have trust that creates trustworthiness and trustworthiness creates trust? Yes, in, in, some, in some way, uh, 
the idea of, of me with my my colleague is that uh, trust cannot be only one direction uh, one direction line in the sense that it's not possible to think about that uh, I'm, I, I interact with a robot, I measure the trust, that's it. The idea is that what happens normally in the human human interaction, if I interact with you that, are, that, that you are my friends, I have my trust that is normally because I trust you very high, but in some sense it is very natural that my trust can go up and down depending in uh, what is the argument of the interaction that we are conducting, but not because uh, I don't trust you more or less, but because uh, we're starting from an idea that uh, every person has his personal skill, skill and if uh, I trust that uh, in some situation your skill is not so high, it's possible that my trust can go up and up. The idea is that if we, if we are able to complete this our idea to have a pro-social perceptual loop, in some way we can have a robot that can adapt his behavior depending on the level of the trust that he receive from a truster. And in some way, the idea is to correct the behavior of the robot if the, the robot is acting in a way that put the trust of the human in the low level. Thank you. Any Thank more you. questions? If I can ask a question. Hi, Rosario. Hello. For, for humans, I think trust is often motivated by the need because we need social interaction, we need to achieve some goals with other people together, so we trust because we mostly must. Did okay. you try to accord, account for it? Because when the person is aware they are in a experimental settings, then they don't share some goal they must achieve together with the robot or with the human companion. It's very different from regular human interaction. Okay, I, I, I agree with you that uh, the experimental scenario uh, put the, the human that are involved in experimental uh, in a different condition because they probably know that they are in a in not a real situation. Our idea in the, in the near future, if uh, to try to organize uh, an experimental scenario that in some way reproduce a minimal real scenario with a long term interaction in order that, okay, the human forget about the situation to be in experimental scenario and we try to understand how it's possible to create uh, an interaction. I also agree with you that, uh, okay, that when a human and human interact together, they are moved by needs. And uh, I perfectly agree with you. These needs can be positive or negative, but there is also a, a reason because uh, I want to interact with another human. We can be a, a, a positive interaction because he's a friend or a, a relative of mine, or, or it can be a negative because I want to take advantage of the interaction. This can be a good suggestion to take into consideration in, uh, for uh, improving this model to try to understand how the robot could, could be uh, considered as a need, as an instrument or, or uh, like uh, something that could be useful for the interaction that you need to conduct. Thank you. Thank you to you. Thanks for your question. Okay, I, I guess we should move forward. And thank you very much, Rosario. Thank you very much to you, Alexei, and to all the people that are. Uh, thank you, Antonio, that. Uh, okay. Um, is very useful the work the, that you have um, done. Our next speaker is uh, Professor Antonio Lieto.